Hi everyone and welcome to Club 4, episode 7 of Rolling in the Isles, an FM 22 British Isles Journeyman series with me, the United City FM. Welcome along. So, form has actually taken a turn for the better, to be honest. Since we were together last and we lost in the cup final against the New Saints, we've played a couple of games in the league, including two against the top two, the New Saints and Bangor City, and beat them both which is pretty impressive stuff considering the drop in form that we had just before that. Today, though, big match. We are currently three points clear of Cardiff Met Uni, who are in fourth position. They're hunting us down, trying to take our European spot away from us. With half a dozen or so games left of the season, can we get a better lead on them and win three points today? Let's find out. <laughs> So welcome back to Connor's Key Nomads in the top flight of Welsh football. We've done brilliantly well in the last few weeks. If we just go and have a look in on the schedule, you'll see this is the last time you and I were together. It came off the bad, bad 5-2 loss to Cardiff Met Uni. And then into that episode where we lost the cup final, the momentum wasn't with us. And actually TNS absolutely blew us away on that occasion. But... A win against Barry in the Welsh Cup fourth round, the very next game, really propelled us forward. We then beat the New Saints 3-1, followed by a 2-1 win over Bangor City. Then we played Carnarthen, uh, Carnarthen, I'm not quite sure, and we beat them 2-1 as well in the league. So we find ourselves against Cardiff Met Uni. We've got Airbus UK in the quarterfinal of the JD Welsh Cup, so I'm hopeful of a, a, a chance to get through to the semi-final there as well. We've still got half a dozen games or so to play in the league, but we are still sitting in that European spot. A little while ago, you'll remember that we were up there hunting for titles with the New Saints and Bangor City, but we've dropped off a lot since then. Picking up six points against those two recently, those helped us. But you can see that Cardiff Met Uni have kept pace with us. Still three points behind us in the league. Everybody else has dropped away. But it's a real shootout now for the rest of the season. I don't think we're going to get back to Bangor City or the New Saints. I don't think they're going to drop enough points. But... It's now about keeping that third spot for our European place next season. And Cardiff Met Uni, they're hunting us down. So let's see how we get on today. We're at home, which should help us. Uh, but in theory, it's a little bit of a pick em, this one, really. Let's hope that we come out on top. <laughs> So in terms of personnel, the only issue we've got is one of our central defenders is out. Matty Williams is suspended through picking up too many yellow cards, basically. So he's out for today's match. Other than that, we're pretty much full strength. We've got a couple of players that have had less game time recently, so their match sharpness might not be as good. But we're basically going in with our number one starting lineup. The only two changes that we've made is Amos coming into the centre of defence over Matty Williams, and Candy gets to not uh, the nod today over Lewis Lloyd. Again, those two interchange as the partner for Johnson, and neither one of them are really doing it particularly. Um, so Candy gets the shout today because he scored a goal recently. Hopefully that will give him some momentum. So for today's match against Cardiff Met Uni in the league, trying to hold on to that European spot, we go with parking goal, Barrett at right back, Roberts at left back, Amos and Boddenham in central defence, Berry and Pinchard in central midfield, Reese on the right, Bowers on the left, Candy and Johnson up top with a bench of Evans, Ward, Cullimore, Fitzpatrick, Mitchell, Whiteside and Lloyd. So let's get into today's game and see what happens. So hands on hips was the gesture I used. This is the day Cardiff met Uni's five match unbeaten run ends. Let's go and do that. Interestingly, in the little team talk options, it suggested that Cardiff Met Uni are number one in the form guide currently, with us sitting in second place in the form guide. So this is two teams at the height of their powers just at the moment. We've been through a little bit of a bad patch, really, uh, recently. And so ultimately, it's good timing to get this uh, run of form together. But it won't matter if we lose this type of match. This is a key match for us. 
They've had a couple of early opportunities there, but we counter off their corner kick. Johnson holds the ball up very nicely, drifts out to the right-hand side, then uses Reese as the outlet ball. He drives forward again, back inside to Johnson, who drifts again to the right-hand side, keeping the ball really well. Pinchard rides his luck a little bit there. Bowers, where's the through ball? I thought we were going through the middle, then we're not. Bowers down the left-hand side, and then drifts it off, unfortunately, over the byline. His control let him down there a little bit, unfortunately. Uh, but it's another highlight straight away. Early highlights. One for them early in the game. And then a corner kick and a counter-attack for us. Now this is our second opportunity. They fortunately give us the ball back then because it wasn't great play by us in the first instance. We go long and give them the ball back and win it again ourselves. It's one of those periods of play where nobody seems to want it. Now we can set all the play down, potentially. Amos with the ball and it's aimless from Amos over the top and again they're going along and again we win it back nobody seems to want to really keep the ball just at the moment Barris through to Johnson and that's much much better very decisive once it was into Barris you see the run of Johnson keep going through the lines and Bowers is clever enough to be able to put the ball through round the corner for him. This is a great bit. There's the Johnson run. Brilliant ball through the eye of a needle between two defenders from Bowers. Johnson gets through on the goalkeeper and puts it underneath him into the bottom left-hand corner. And that is a pretty good start to the game, really. Seven minutes in. There's a highlight immediately. That's always a little bit worrying, isn't it, really? Because they have had a couple of chances to get a couple of opportunities. Haven't made the most of them just yet. But here is their next one. And they've managed to break the lines for themselves. But the goalkeeper stands up really, really well and parries the ball out for a corner kick in the end. Over on that far side. Danger isn't over yet. Into the near post. We get it partially cleared out for a throw-in. Then that highlight goes and dies, particularly that one. So we're, we're looking OK. But interestingly, considering I think we scored a very good goal that was very well worked, we've only got a 0.5 XG rating. You'd imagine it would be a little bit higher than that because it was a good one on one with a goalkeeper. And that should have boosted that up a little bit. Three shots at goal, one on target for us, uh, eight and four for them. Uh, their XG rating is better than ours. Their percentage of possession of the ball is better than ours. We've got that one goal lead, but it feels like at 36 minutes that we're just hanging in there a little bit. And again, they've swept the ball over to that left-hand side. Early ball in that. We were a little bit unlucky in the sense that the goalkeeper made a brilliant first save and the defenders weren't on the ball enough to get to the ball first to clear it. And it's unfortunate that the second shot comes in when the goalkeeper is basically on the floor and can't do much about it. Good header here. Uh, I guess ultimately Park didn't know too much about it. Uh, couldn't readjust his feet, uh, his feet, unfortunately, to get across for the second ball. And we go back to 1-1 one, one, and it had been coming. I mean, if we pause it just momentarily, it's worth checking these things out. This is something we've been looking at on my Twitch stream. If you're not over on my Twitch, we're there every weekday afternoon, 3 till 5 p.m. UK time. Come and join us over there. It's a lot of fun and it's a brilliant community of people. But this is the thing that we've been looking at recently and trying to change it. One shot on target out of the five that we've created is not good enough. If we're in the sort of five shots on uh, on goal, we need it to at least be three out of five that we're actually putting on the goal itself to make the goalkeeper doing something. And that's where we're kind of losing it a little bit in this first half. We've had one shot on target. Not happy about that. So one thing that we've been doing on the Twitch stream with my uh, side over there, we're playing as Rosenborg in Norway currently, is that we've been reducing the amount of shots that the strikers take as we go 2-1 down off a corner kick to the back post, unfortunately. But yeah, uh, reducing the amount of chances that they actually take and reducing the amount of risky things that they do in the striking department has maybe had an impact. We'll see whether we can work some of that into this team as well because it's not been good enough. I think we're going to have to go into the... Sh uh, oh, no. We, we, we were going to go into the shouts, but we've reached half-time, so we can do it there instead. And I'm going to have to read them the Riot Act because none of the play really has been that great. Our XG rating demonstrates that we've not done anything spectacular, even though we've got that goal. So we're going to thrash the arms. You've been terrible. We're going to um, just put this team out in the same shape, in the same setup that we were playing. We're going to just go in and fire them up and see if just that team talk and that little bit of a boost from the shout can up their ratings, their rankings a little bit in this early part of the second half. If it doesn't, 
and it doesn't look like it is because we've reached 60 minutes and done absolutely nothing. Now we're going to have to change it, unfortunately. Um, so let's go in to the tactic first off. We're going to keep the shape sort of in the 4-4-2, but we're going to boost up these wide men to play higher up the pitch. Uh, so that's the first change we're going to do. We've got a custom win play. We're going to uh, go into the attacking version of that. We're going to change some of these settings up. I don't necessarily want to focus down the, uh, the wings. We're just going to see whether it naturally happens. We're going to narrow ourselves slightly. Still going to run at defence. We're going to lower the tempo, but raise the directness of part and passing a little bit. Let's be more uh, direct and dynamic, hopefully, on that. In terms of in transition, we'll have a look at that counter pre uh the possession, uh, we're counter-attacking, we're not pressing them, so we are going to press them now and just see if we can keep them up the pitch. We're not going to be distributing to the flanks, etc. Uh, we're going to let the team play how they want to play a little bit. Uh, we're going to get him... Uh, no, we're not going to get that, actually. That, go, that counters the fact that we've slowed the pace down a little bit, so we're not going to get that uh, to happen at all. And then out of possession, I think we'll drop the line of defence slightly just to give us less space behind ourselves. And we're going to up the intensity of the trigger of the press quite considerably, to be honest. So those are the changes we've made. In terms of personnel, Barrett's injured on the right-hand side, so Joel Ward can come in and cover that spot. We've got a couple of players, especially midfield, where we're actually looking a little bit tired. So we're going to um, improve the engine room by bringing on Cullymore for Pinchard. And we're going to make one more change. We could either take Candy out and put Lloyd in, but as I say, they're much of a muchness. I'm wondering whether we change shape slightly. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Candy out, put Fitzpatrick in, uh, and this guy, Fitzpatrick, we're actually going to drop him in here. Uh, let's move him into the more central spot. Um, and we're going to get him to play just behind uh, Johnson. And with Berry hopefully encroaching up into this sort of area as the supporting Mets are there, and the wingers having a go down the, uh, the wide right and left, hopefully we can get some more opportunities off of Johnson around us. So we're just going to move him into the shadow striker role, I think, on attack, because it will move him higher up, higher up the pitch. It will make him make late runs, etc. And we'll just see what happens there. The shadow striker seems to be pretty good, this FM. Uh, I've used it in a, a tactic that I'm working on over on Twitch with my 4-3-1-2. So uh, it's an interesting setup. So we'll see whether it can do us any favours here. Johnson, with an early chance after the changes, doesn't quite manage to get it past the goalkeeper who parries it out for another corner kick. But at least we were there having a go and properly giving it some. Uh, the corner comes in, they get it cleared, but we're going to win the loose ball eventually. Reese took his sweet time about getting to it, though, didn't he, really? And then drives down the right-hand side all the way to the byline, cuts it back. It's a bit of a wayward cross, though, and the highlight goes. Disappointing play from him. Didn't seem to have any urgency in his movement, and then his cross was fairly rubbish, to be honest. And we're a bit fortunate there that we get away with one from uh, Cardiff Met Uni and how they were uh, encroaching on our goal at that point. But the highlight hasn't gone, and they're still pushing at us. Let's see if we can find a way with the press that we've got a little bit to find a way to win the ball back. <sighs> Oh, we were so lucky. That was so, so, so lucky. They should have got an easy goal on that one. The first uh, shot hit the woodwork, came, uh, not the woodwork, came back out to the second striker. And he hit the woodwork on it when it was pretty much easier to put it in the back of the net. We are very fortunate there. We've got 10 minutes to play. They're on another highlight. We win the ball. If we can get a goal here then that's looking a little bit better. Maybe we can shift the momentum of the game a little bit. Brilliant through ball. Johnson, when you need him, and he hasn't delivered. The youngster is really good at this level, but occasionally, just when you really need him in some of the bigger matches, he does go a little bit erratic and a little bit missing sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. And on these occasions, these are when we really need him. Again, a little bit of a poor... Uh, poor ball in so we're gonna have to demand more from them uh, as one more shout and they come through at us and they've put the game to bed eight minutes to go they're now three one up it's been a little bit of an uphill climb all the way through this game since we took that early-ish lead 
You could see all the statistics for the match suggested the momentum was with Cardiff City Met. They're obviously um, Cardiff Met Uni. Sorry, Cardiff City Met. It's complicated, some of these names. Cardiff Met Uni. But you can see sometimes that, I mean, they've had 18 shots at goal, nine on target, nine and two for us. They've got double our XG rating, basically. And they've been dominant in a game where we needed to get a good performance out of our side. And the recent form has suggested that we should have been able to do it. I think we've competed okay in bits, but not consistently enough. And when we've had key moments in the second half, they've not been quite up to the task. Uh, here's a chance off a free kick to get one back on them. Cullymore, and he puts a good enough effort in, but the goalkeeper parries it around the post, and we're running out of time, and there goes the final whistle. We are in a lot of trouble for our European spot. I really, really thought that beating the, the New Saints and Bangor City recently was going to propel us forward, but Cardiff Met Uni, for their, to their credit, they stayed with us during that period where we were winning good, important games. They were doing the same... And it just meant that they had the chance to take uh, the advantage away from us. And they have done that today. And they've done it quite comprehensively. We talked a little bit last episode about this team not being quite as good as maybe our positioning might uh, seem that it is just at the moment. We were predicted fifth. I feel like we're over uh, overperforming slightly. And it's a little bit disappointing now when it's really come to the uh, important games. We've been left wanting just a little bit. But that's going to do it here. We're going to have to uh, bite the bullet on this one and just carry on. So we're going to thrash the arms around. Far from pleased with it because that's the reality of the situation. Ultimately, we should have done better than we did. We should have competed better than we did. And ultimately, that's disappointing. And we have dropped out on goal difference, basically, of that top three. And I was concerned that that was definitely going to happen. I knew it was coming. It doesn't look, it doesn't make for good reading, does it really? At the point where we were just beginning to put some pressure on Bangor City ahead of us, we've now got another added problem to sort out. And I can't afford really to lose that European spot. It brings in some really good finances and some benefits to that. So we've got a fight on our hands and we're going to absolutely have to put up a fight to get it back. So let's see what the news feed has to say. Not a lot there, to be honest. Amos reveals uh, my fury. My my manager in this series, just so you know, is called Journey Man, just because why not? Uh, so that's why it says uh, Amos reveals man fu uh, man's fury. So let's go back into the schedule to finish this episode off. And you can see we started brilliantly and then it just kind of went erratic. We caught a little bit of good form. And that's just put a little bit of a stop to it. Fortunately, we got a decent game for us against Airbus UK in the Welsh Cup quarterfinal. So hopefully that will be a win for us and we can get back to winning ways. What do I want to come back for next episode? I feel like we should probably come back and... Do I want to play the new Saints or do I just want to get to the end? I think I might just head towards Haverford West, to be honest, and we'll play out the rest of the season off the camera and just come and update you on that one. I fear that our European chances have maybe diminished too much, but we'll see. We need to get back in the winning track again and hopefully pick up some good points and hope that Cardiff Met Uni at one point or another drops some valuable points for us. But yeah, Really disappointing result and an even more disappointing performance, really. You just want your team to show up and be competitive and fight for the, the things that, that are available to us when, when it really hits and matters. But today, they just didn't do it. But there we go. That's just the way it is. We'll move on. We'll see what happens next time out. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. Sorry it wasn't the result that we were both looking for. I, I hope that you're hoping that I win anyway. <laughs> but I was hopeful and it didn't quite work out. But subscribe to the channel anyway. Uh, come and join my United City community, the more the merrier. Click that like button on this particular episode. That will help me get seen by more people. Until next time, take care of yourselves. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.